Hello. Uh, Mr. Vivek, so can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you well. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Vivek. Welcome to the session. So we can get started. Sure. So uh, you want me to share my screen? Uh, let me uh, the flow. Uh, let me do the introduction uh, of the session for two minutes, and then I'll hand over to you. You can talk, take it over from there. If okay. you have a presentation, you can share the screen. Sure. sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. A warm good afternoon to everyone. Welcome all to the workshop on cybersecurity. Today we have with us Mr. Vivek Sarkale as our speaker. Mr. Vivek is a senior consultant at Data Security Council of India. He's also the member of Information Systems Audit and Control Association. He also served as data scientist at Open Cloud Institute, the University of Texas. He has his expertise on various fields such as identity and access management, SCA, DA, IIoT security, cyber physical systems, big data analytics, AI deep learning, cryptography, malware analysis, and threat hunting, and many more. So, um, welcome, Mr. Vivek. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Vasuki, for the introduction. Uh, so, glad to be here and uh, talking about the cybersecurity for startup ecosystem. Uh, so, as uh, Vasuki uh, introduced, uh, I'm Vivek Sarkale, working with the senior consultant. Um, as a DS, uh, working as a senior consultant in Data Security Council of India, and I'm also leading a DSCI Threat Intelligence Initiative. Um, and uh, today's uh, discussion is all about uh, talking about the cybersecurity measures and cybersecurity preparedness for the startups. Um, so I would like to share my screen to begin with the session. Uh, I'll uh, just try to share my screen. Uh, Mr. Vivek, just before getting started, uh, like I just wanted to confirm audience, if audience, all of you can hear, can you put a yes in the chat so that we know that you can hear us. Yes, they can hear Mr. Vivek. We can go ahead, please. So I'll be on mute and I'll be at the hind side. Sure. Uh, sis, can you confirm if you are able to see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so as... Uh, as yeah, as we discussed, um, you know, the topic is going to be mainly on the um, on the cybersecurity for startups, and uh, uh, I'll be presenting some of the nuances of uh, what are the things that needs to be considered in uh, when we are talking about cybersecurity for for young startups who are actually stepping up into new ideas um, and trying to solve a specific problem in the in the country or in the globe. Um, cybersecurity is a very essential part of uh, today's life, not just as a corporate, but it is also a part of uh, our lives because we are the um, we are interfaced with internet. Uh, we are using some of the next generation technologies, uh, and mainly we are using um, mobile devices and applications on day to day basis. So it is actually a part of our everyday uh, lifestyle. It is a part of everyone's life. Um, and at the end, definitely uh, the solution providers uh, and then, uh, you know, kind of a startups who are actually stepping into uh, kind of a solution provision and then trying to solve some of the complex problems. But while solving the complex problems, I think uh, from last four or five years, you might be uh, hearing about a lot of data, uh, data breaches and cyber attacks, which are uh, not just in the India, but also in the globe. And uh, that is really um, that is really causing a worry because it is not just um, it is not just uh, attacking the infrastructure applications and endpoints, but it is a causing a maximum damage to the organizations. And those damages are uh, from the monetary point of view. Those damages are from the reputation point of view, and uh, also from the availability of a business point of view. Because most of the cyber attacks that you might be hearing from last four or five years from non data and wanna cry ransomware. It is especially uh, compromising the availability uh, of your business. And uh, business disruptions can definitely cause you uh, financial losses, reputation, uh, reputation damage, and apparently you will end up uh, losing your business or your customers. 
So uh, in that context, cybersecurity uh, is very crucial for all the young startups and, and uh, while they are thinking and translating the bright ideas into a, some sort of a solutions or some sort of uh, some sort of a, uh, you know some sort of applications, then cybersecurity needs to be think uh, from the design phase itself. And that's why I'll, I'll talk about it uh, today. And uh, this is what the agenda that we have for today. So first, I think let's let's talk about some of the evolving threats uh, which are targeting startups, especially, uh, and what are the current trends that we see today. Um, so because see, the threats are really evolving day to day, and uh, every day uh, there are there are new techniques, techniques and procedures uh, which are which are which are also evolving, right? Means few years back, if you ask me, uh, like 10, 15 years back, it was mainly about some of these viruses and some of the uh, small scale malwares and trojans right but today if you see it is completely uh, transformed into the uh, transformed into the next generation uh, root kits ransomware attacks uh, uh, access trojans and then uh, then it is also uh, followed by some of the data exploitation uh, attacks uh, targeted phishing campaign attacks so these trends are always evolving and uh, so when threats are evolving, we also need to catch up uh, the trends and need to ensure that we are having a better preparedness uh, and prevention mechanism against it. We will try to focus some light on what are those threats which are targeting startups these days and how current trends looks like so that we get a fair idea about what is actually going on and how we can, uh, how we can ensure that better prevention from those threats, right? The second uh, would be that uh, startups are facing some of the security challenges as well, right? Because it's not um, it's not that you know um, any company which started uh, running its business started offering some of its services through technology or maybe through B two C, B two B, or many any sort of a, any sort of a business setup that you might have, right? It is never easy to solve a cybersecurity challenge uh, in the in the in the newbie like uh, startups, right? So there are definitely some of the existing challenges that uh, startups do face, and uh, and uh, we need to throw some light on those challenges and deliberate on uh, how we can conquer those some of the security challenges. Then we will think about some of these ten steps for the security planning because uh, you cannot jump into a security like that. You cannot jump say tomorrow I will secure my network, tomorrow I will secure my devices, uh, I will secure users and data. So directly jumping into the security without having a proper plan uh, that may fail entire purpose. So at the uh, at the high level, you need to have a specific plan that needs to be executed in the organization as far as uh, security and privacy matters, right? So uh, planning is very important uh, when it comes to security, driving some of those organizational security policies uh, and how you're going to implement those security uh, measures in your organization, that is very important. So planning stage is very crucial and very important. Uh, and that we will discuss as a part of the third element. The first, the first thing is that now, once you do a planning, then there is always question that, do we have a specific checklist or a specific exhaustive frameworks and guidelines that needs to be followed by startups? So I will keep it very simple. Um, if you if you have a if you have a clear understanding of your infrastructure, you are having a clear visibility over what what are your assets, what are your uh, high value assets, what are your low value assets, where they are placed, um, and how they are exposed to the internet. If you have the enough visibility on that, uh, first step starts with the implementing your basic rights. So, so cyber security hygiene that we call it. So making your basic rights will definitely save you from many of those attacks, like uh, attacks which are causing from exploitation of vulnerabilities, attacks which are caused by a targeted phishing campaign. So doing a basic rights, uh, basics rights is, is very crucial for ensuring that you are following security checklist. And of course, if you wanted to simplify security, it's always uh, for a startup, you can ensure that you are taking the initial uh, measures at the user side, you are taking measures at uh, protecting devices and endpoints, and lastly, you are protecting your network. So even if you try to simplify this, um, uh, even if you try to simplify this into these three to four phases, 
it will be really easy for you to ensure the bare minimum security right and now i think uh, now situation has changed right uh, so it's not it's not that you will do all the basic rights and uh, you will follow the simple phase approach for securing your organization but today i think uh, entire work culture has shifted towards a new paradigm right uh so from last uh, two years at two and a half years we've been in a pandemic uh, a traditional architecture and traditional foundation of it itself has got changed because we are not used to um, uh, earlier with this remote infrastructure and remote working style suddenly due to pandemic we had to switch to the remote from uh, remote working work style and it has uh, certainly changed the way we used to work the way we used to manage our it and also it has a direct impact towards the security so the trust that you have when you work in the enterprise network uh, is completely different when you work from home right you are having edge devices across distributed across several regions several locations then you have your enterprise network which is located in some places some place where you are accessing critical resources from different uh, locations uh, so so security traditional security it was last like in, in before 2 to 3 years it is it's not the same today right it has completely changed so security approach also has changed a lot uh, the, the technology is like a zero trust architecture or maybe uh, sasi secure access service edge those technologies are really evolved to ensure that um, we could go closer to establish the same level of trust that we used to have when we used to work in the enterprise so today the role of technology has significantly grown um, because uh, we definitely marked on a digitization in last uh, four or five years but even after pandemic our reliance on technology is has um, this has extremely changed and it is it is really uh, we are really depend on uh, technology day to day right for that we definitely need a separate approach and different approach all together to ensure that Uh, you are securing your devices applications your network and your people so that will be our uh, our four uh, for a fifth uh, element to discuss and then lastly we will open a bridge for the q and a so going to the first thing is that about evolving trends uh, which are targeting startups and what current trends that we see so if you see today and uh, uh, and uh, i would like to definitely take a pause here that i don't think anyone in this meeting uh, who uh, who has not heard about uh, ransomware and ransomware has increasingly become a uh, a threat for not just in, uh, just for india but also for the world because of the given uh, disastrous and exploit exploitable nature of the ransomware the way they are uh, way they are exploiting the systems with a new version of ransomware and once you are infected with a ransomware hardly there is a solution that you recover from it right there are definitely solutions that you can take a backup but now uh, as i as we discussed in the introductory attackers are coming with the new tactics and techniques and procedures so this day is not just uh, old fashioned ransomware it is uh, it is it is much more beyond that so ransomware are the services which are not just encrypting your data it is not encrypting uh, your key files but before encrypting it has also started to uh, exfiltrate your data means before encryption happens on your system it actually exfiltrate entire data to the command and control server so that even if you have a backup you, there is already one copy of your data with the attacker and if you do not pay ransom or if you do not pay any extortion uh, he is always free to make your data public right so that is why ransomware is a very uh, key threat which attacking the uh, startups and new technology company and now you will ask uh, why it is attacking so might be there are two to three data breaches that we heard in two to three years in india larger technology companies in the country are uh, are at most attack and those are because their entire operations are based on it their entire solutioning their entire offerings are based on the applications uh, based on the mobile applications and web applications so once they attack this particular uh, infrastructure they know that it's going to hamper the availability of that particular startup or that particular technology company and if it is hampering the availability and also some extent confidentiality 
their startup is definitely going to pay some ransom so there is a thought process that goes behind any targeted ransomware attack and it is continuously attacking uh, some of those uh, some of those technology companies and startups in the country so um, so there are definitely um, there are definitely two sides of it one is definitely the causing availability and disruption in the businesses but more importantly all those ransomwares which are being asked those are really high value cost and uh, and and uh, and the organizations which has to bear and secondly it also causes a reputational damage if it gets leaked into the public domain so you will end up also uh, losing your existing customers if customers get a feeling that uh, the, the startups or technology company which i am dealing with is no longer secure from ransomware or any next generation attack then why would customer choose you uh, if you are not secure against any of those attacks and today due to the stringent regulatory compliances uh, like gdpr in the eu and the proper data protection bill in the country all the customers across the globe are very much cautious about their data and uh, whom they are dealing with because largely these days third party uh, third party and supply chain attacks on our rights that even if you are secure if any one of your partner or any one of your uh supply uh, any of the element in the supply chain is insecure or he is not making a better security then there is a possibility that attack can escalate from that weakest link in the supply chain that's why organization today are more cautious customers are more cautious about cyber security preparedness and that's why cyber secu cyber security is a very essential for the startups from not just from securing infrastructure but also from from the business point of view to retention of a customers to convince uh, to to create a convenience Uh, and uh, convincing your customers about your cyber security preparedness the second thing which is more promising and uh, which is very difficult to deal with because it is not just technology problem it is also cut across the people because when we you when we view cyber security it is always a people process and technology right because targeted phishing campaign is actually uh, campaigns are usually uh, make use of a social engineering and uh, and when we talk about cyber security in the context of people process and technology the people element is the most vulnerable element because there could be a different uh, phases that people go through and not every person sitting in the organization is a technology person he may not understand the uh, what how to distinguish between the phish, uh, phishing attack or he may get lured by attacker to click on some suspicious link uh, which he can click and get some uh benefits for his uh, his own or maybe for a company so he clicks on the suspicious link or attachments and that actually starts the um, the any other cyber attack uh, in the organization right so targeted phishing campaigns are one of the most critical uh, element that now uh, uh, every organization is worried about because it cut across the people element uh, not just technology element and uh, in the today's uh, targeted campaigns you see many phishing attempts every day and you definitely have to implement some of the security technologies to thwart uh, those phishing attempts um, by using some of the email security solution but there will be definitely a false positive when uh, the email phishing campaigns are conducted and apparently it will reach to some of those employees and if those employees are not able to distinguish between it then it is a possibility that attacker would use that Uh, that weakest link to enter into your infra infrastructure and and your network. So, targeted phishing campaigns actually accounts for um, so as per uh, as per the micro attack framework that we have for learning tactic techniques and procedures. Uh, the social engineering is one of the common method used for the initial access into a system. So that's why targeted phishing campaigns are much more dangerous uh, than you think. the third thing that you might be uh, also hearing day to day uh, is the critical application vulnerability and um, there are the, uh, we 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 go through the lot of application development rapid application development startup also have the stringent commitments to release their um, uh, release their you know uh, different sprints uh, right uh, they have the different sprints of their application there are some of the new additions there are some of the new uh, inbuilt technologies that you need to add a new integration that you have to make new api integration that you have to make so all of those comes with the possibility that you keep the vulnerability in your applications right so uh, keeping any of the top 10 like oas top 10 vulnerability or sans 25 vulnerability in application 
and if attacker is able to identify that uh, vulnerability uh, in your application, it is possible that attacker would like to expose those vulnerabilities and are trying to exploit that vulnerability to gain access into your application and your network. So vulnerabilities today are very important to look at it towards appropriate patch management of vulnerability. Uh, and firstly, uh, organizations and startups needs to uh, ensure that there are no existing vulnerabilities so you consider the security by design when you are developing the applications. So uh, there are ways to avoid critical application vulnerability that we will discuss definitely uh, in the later part. But the critical vulnerability into the application is uh, it is very difficult to manage because there is a recent example which I can quote. Uh, there was an the example of the KCR ransomware attack or supply chain attack where there was a critical vulnerability into that IT management solution. That vulnerability exploited, and that particular IT management solution was used by many other people and many other organizations across the globe through their managed security service provider and through their um, through their channel partners. So the one vulnerability into that particular CACIA supply chain attack impacted uh, millions of customers across the globe, and uh, and it was it was apparently ended up exposing the customer's data into public domain. So. Vulnerabilities are very critical uh, to look at it, and it's a, one of the important threads that I see because when uh, vulnerability can be any sort of a nature, it can be uh, it can be critical vulnerability such as a remote desktop protocol vulnerability. It can be a severe vulnerability such as uh, the internal blue that we have seen in the uh, in the non petia and petia case, right? So this vulnerability can be anything, and those vulnerability can be exploited by attackers by using uh, some of the attacking techniques like reconnaissance, passive and active scanning of your applications. Uh, all of those techniques that attacker uses to identify applications, uh, identifying vulnerabilities in application, and possibly uh, it can be exploited to further conduct um, for the attack. Right. The third important thing, which is very important today. And I think initially we touched upon, touched upon the entire world is actually now moving around the data. The data is at the center of every solution and every technology that is getting built. Because whether you take example of e-commerce, whether you take example of healthcare, whether you take example of IoT, so data is also at the center because most of the smart tech, the smart solutioning part or smart solutions are revolving around the data because artificial intelligence is making a crucial role that data which you are collecting, data which you are processing, and what outcome you are getting out of data and how you can use that outcome to serve your customers better in the uh, in the today's world, right? So data being at the center of everything, attackers are also interested in the data because with the crucial and with sensitive data, attackers can gain anything, right? They can sell that data into a dark web. So dark web is the, uh, the closed web, where the data, passwords, and all of those can be sold to uh, anyone who wish to buy. So, attackers are also more interested to buy your data, to breach your, to or maybe take some extortion if your data is already out. So, data breaches are actually very difficult, and those not just leak your information or data, it is also cause you a significant financial and reputational damage by by um, by by exposing your data to the public domain. As you know that EVG repair is in place, um, uh, there is a significant amount of fines that are imposed on the organizations if they are not able to report any of the data breach, uh, and if you are not there, if they are not able to handle the data breach, right? So their already regulatory landscape is very strict about uh, data and data being handled and data being uh, managed uh, because uh, it also it also tagged with the privacy aspect of your customers. So that is very crucial part, and that's a fourth aspect uh, and the fourth threats that we see that startups are uh, startups are facing. And more importantly, why startups are more more targeted because um, these are those are mainly in an asset stage. They may not have the uh, necessary skill set or necessary budget approvals to ensure that you are keeping your data safe. They not they, they may not implement immediate technologies to secure and safeguard data. So the attackers have might, might have done a very um, robust study about whom to attack and how to attack. So that's why data breaches are very difficult, and that's one of the key threats. The fourth, which is important thing that we heard about APT, which is advanced persistent threats. So it's all all across the globe, there are different APT groups which are active. They are having their own tactics, techniques, and procedures. 
they come up with their new malwares and new version of malwares uh, trojans backdoors which they use against the different organizations to collect sensitive information to steal passwords to steal their intellectual property their plans their business cost sheets and all of those things which are uh, which are uh, which started from the sophisticated malware attacks necessarily on the servers and the key endpoints devices which are in the organization so that's a sophisticated apt groups that we have seen there are a lot of apt groups uh, from different uh, state and non state actors which are actually active and they able, they are able to target um, some of the startups and some of these uh, some of the new technology companies so these are the evolving threats that and trends that we see today and uh, it tends to evolve there are definitely new trends and tactics techniques and procedures that attackers are coming with and the point and conclusion which we are making here that uh, as a startup and as a technology company it's not just about making your solution better and better but also thinking about security and privacy of your customers and your own organization that is very much critical right staying up to date is very much important in the uh, in in the matter of cyber security so now um, so if you have any questions please feel free to drop in the chat box uh we may take those questions uh, at the end so uh, when while we discussed all of these evolving threats into the startup ecosystem um the very important thing is now is the security challenges which are faced by uh, startups right it's not that it's easy for startups to think about security and they will implement it there are definitely some operational challenges there are some of the tactical level challenges there are some of the strategic challenges that startup needs to face uh, while they are thinking about security right so while startups are newbie and they are trying to reach out to their customers their entire spending is to make their business uh, visible to the customers right and correct me if i am wrong most of the startups they are having a really a pressure and burden that how they can make their startups and their offerings visible to the public uh, if if there if it is a bit to see if it is a bit to be how they can engage with more businesses so that their solution and technology is adopted so there is a there is a different uh, there is a different pressure uh, that startups are definitely facing um, uh, uh, every day and in that particular uh, particular burden um the security is definitely could give us a line to look at it right and then most of the startups always get confused about where to start about security in the organization how do i start what are the necessary steps i have to take whether i have to hire uh, 10 15 people and then do nothing whether i have to hire um, some of the security operation uh, center as a service uh, and then do nothing or maybe if i have to hire any of the chief information security officer so where to start is one of the crucial aspect that organizations these days facing so very important aspect of the uh, where to start is definitely that we discussed in the uh, in the initial remark is to plan better for your organization your organization needs to know that what exactly you have as a organization what are the assets you have what are the application endpoints network so you need to have a very clear visibility on your organization infrastructure which are exposed to the internet and there is a possible possible risk which can which can start cause certain disruption um, confidentiality integrity and availability compromise so you need to have a clear visibility on it and having the visibility on it it is necessary to formulate a plan and policies uh, keeping security and privacy at the center because without having the security policy plan it is very difficult for any organization to execute anything in the organization that clear vision is very much required uh, when you talk about the uh, cyber security in the organization so that is answer to the answer to the where to start the first is definitely thinking about creating visibility into your organization what are your short term goals and long term goals about security what how you want to plan your security and what are the larger security policies that you are going to have second i think this this you will definitely agree with me and then the second is a definitely a budget limitations to spend on the security because nothing can run uh, without money right uh, if you don't have a finances if you don't have a budget which is a uh, sufficient enough to cater to your security and privacy need then it's it's it it, it fails the purpose because 
you cannot drive your security uh, uh, without having specific budget right because for having security technologies for having security processes for having security talent you definitely need some budget allocated to it but fortunately last one or two years that we have, have significantly changed the seen the change in the boardrooms so cyber security become a discussion in every boardroom because of the its impact on the larger risk and the businesses right now everyone every board member now wanted to know about whether my organization is secure how we are doing it and how, what steps we are taking it to secure our organization so fortunately things are changing but still there are budget limitations and constraints on the spend of security how many percent of it budget how many percent of my security uh, how many percent of my it budget should be spent on security so minimum uh, 10 to 15 percent of your uh, security uh, of your it budget needs to be necessary spent on security for sure if you wanted to ensure that you are securing uh, your critical assets data and endpoints that's the second challenge is most of the startups are, startups are facing the third is difficult difficult to set up a cyber security process and policies yeah this is very important because see uh, you can definitely have budget by approving it you can have technology you can have a people but instilling the security processes and culture in the organization is very important you ensure that you are people in the organization thinking about cyber security when they are logging in when they are managing the password when they are clicking on any of the emails and suspicious link so having appropriate security processes uh, security culture and policies in your organization it's very much important and that needs to be instilled from the beginning itself so uh, most of the organization they really find difficult um, when they suddenly start talking about security to their employees and your employee may not be having idea that what exactly have to do and how to, this process and policy needs to be followed so it requires the long term plan it requires training it requires drills it requires evaluation of processes every day and it requires very much consultation with internal team members and stakeholders the fourth important thing which is not just startups but it is also across the globe that there is a definitely a security talent crunch across the globe and um, uh, we definitely have the talent index every time and we see that there is a 20% 30% shortage of cyber security talent across the globe and every year it is a keep on increasing and the reason behind that definitely pandemic now has uh, kept us relying on the technology and applications more and while we are more relying on technology there are increasing in cyber attacks and while we are increasing in cyber attacks there is definitely need for the cyber security professional who can work uh, towards the prevention and better preparedness against the cyber attack so there is definitely security talent crunch in the market market is very open and there is a talent crunch and for startups for hiring uh, security talent which are experienced in a nature uh, is very difficult from the financial also financial point of view and also from the retention point of view so that is another challenge that most of the startups are facing today the fifth thing there is a still challenge with some of the startups that convincing convincing the attention from the board members most of the board members today as we discussed they are really aware they are sensitized about the cyber security and cyber risk as a larger problem and larger context but there are still some of the uh, boards which are non technology in nature they are not much worried about cyber security they are much worried about the availability and business has to run and we need to get the profit and revenue so that particular mindset is still there very less percentage but still there and most of the startups has to convince their board members about cyber security and most of the energy brain uh, out there to get uh, to convince board members and get the allocated budgets or to get allocation of budget for the cyber security so that's a very important key challenge that uh, startups are facing so all these five challenges are keeping in the center and i think it's never easy for any startups or any new technology company to talk about security from the day one now it has to have a plan it has to have a policies it has to have a procedures but it will definitely it is definitely a gradual process organizations and startups needs to have a short term and long term goals in terms of security and privacy that is the take away from this slide 
So now, if I have to uh, talk about the uh, very important aspect that are the uh, ten steps uh, that we can follow uh, when we are talking about the uh, you know the planning of um, uh, planning of the um, uh, cyber security in the startup ecosystem. So when we talk about the planning. Uh, how do you plan? Means first, definitely we think about the uh, having very robust uh, mechanism and robust procedures and policies for the organization, which will help organizations to uh, build some high-level view uh, of you know things, right? Uh, and that is very crucial. But but when you talk about um, when you talk when you talk about the uh, the larger uh, larger planning, how you and where you start about, right? And that's question everyone gets. So first step, I think we can start with, uh, if you know, um, uh, you know, you can, you can, you, you cannot secure everything from the day one, right? So you just try to define your short-term and long-term targets, and which are very necessary from the basic security hygiene point of view. And uh, that definitely there are NIST frameworks, and uh, there are some of the other frameworks which are out there, which will tell you that what is the bare minimum security that organization needs to have when they are going with the uh, cyber security program in the organization. And there is some of the checklists which are available um, you know, from some of the security standards um, available from, um, you know, from, from ISO and ISO 27001, which specifically talks about security controls. That definitely can be uh, referred that how you can start with, what you can plan about the basic hygiene and short-term plans then what could be your long-term plan? So that is a plan. That is that is a step number one. Second step is now you will have a plan. You will have a budget and everything. As we discussed, it is very important for you to establish a security culture and establish the security processes in the organization, so that security is a feel important. Security feels important in the organization. It's not that you know the security is just on a paper. It has to be in the culture. It has to be instilled into every uh, everyone's uh, everyone's day-to-day activities in the office or in the home from wherever they are working from. And say, for example, strong password management, policies for sharing passwords, policies for managing the password. So all this needs to be instilled into the culture, right? The third thing is that uh, the, the picking of the right security technologies because today, if you go into the market, you will see that there are. The security market is flooded with many security technologies and platforms. So you need to ensure that you are not repeating your efforts by buying the same technology. So you are doing a, you are consolidating your efforts to buy right security technologies for you, which cost you significantly, uh, which cost you moderately, and also gives good return of investment. So choosing third is definitely to choosing right security platforms and right choosing right security controls for your organization. The fourth thing is that. Uh, which we talk about creating the good visibility of your organization and protecting entry point of your organizations. Means if my uh, startup is completely application based, I will completely focus on securing my applications. It is not having any vulnerabilities. It is not having any existing uh, software vulnerabilities or any other vulnerabilities which will be exploited. If my application is completely good application based, I will ensure that I'm not having any application vulnerabilities. I'm having secure socket communication. Uh, I'm having the security certifications. I'm having necessary encryption in the place. So all of those things needs to be think that what could be the entry point of the attacker in the, your infrastructure, your in our organization setup. So threat modeling kind of exercise will help you to identify some of the entry point in the organization, right? So fifth uh, the step uh, for is that. Um, uh, once once you identify the entry point for attacker, how you wanted to close that, right? So uh, after threat modeling, you will definitely have to assess the risk. Not every vulnerability will be exploited and not every vulnerability will have a higher risk. There can be vulnerability which will be there, which will be which will be existing, but it will not cause a certain risk, right? There is a low, medi low medium and high vulnerabilities. Some of the high vulnerabilities that can be exploited to cause a maximum risk for uh, ma maximum risk for the organization. But there can be vulnerabilities which can be lower vulnerability and not necessarily can be exploited. And there might be no risk for the organization. So prioritizing your risk 
prioritizing the uh, prioritizing your uh, vulnerabilities so that you are better protected against it is the fifth step that organization needs to follow then sixth thing is that uh, most of the startups today are interfaced with the mobile applications and web application right right so most of the applications today those are get built on uh, you know some of these uh, uh, platform as a service or maybe quick and easy deployment like docker or maybe some other applications they are very quick they are very quickly deployed they are very quickly developed uh, and uh, in the in the context of devops uh, and and there is a possibility due to that particular quick in the nature there is a possibility that they they leave uh, some of the vulnerabilities behind and those vulnerability keeping behind are uh, really not easy to manage it can be very difficult for the organizations to manage and then secure coding practices as a sixth element is very important because how you manage your applications how you secure your applications there is a there is a new new phenomena or new term called devsecops which is a developed uh, which which is uh, not just devops but you are instilling security in devops so you are thinking about security right from your development and operations so it it will it is also called shift lift, shift uh, shift left movement where you are shifting your security towards the left while you are developing the code while you are trying to develop your application you are considering about security from the beginning so that approach is definitely evolving and startup needs to be considered on it now uh, need to consider about it the seventh thing is that uh managing your network very important because while you are taking care of your endpoints uh, and all of those things your network is very crucial and also in the pandemic time uh, protecting your network in the given distributed and remote infrastructure protecting your network is definitely a not easy task and for that you definitely need to consider about some next generation technology like zero trust which will which will ensure that your network is secure and your accesses are secure irrespective of your location and irrespective of who you are and that is very crucial to part of it and another thing is that the eighth very important thing is that you know following your basic hygiene right because while you do all of those things most of the organizations they talk about lot of new generation technologies but they don't do their basic rights and that's why there are most of the attacks means uh, as per many of the survey around 80 to 65 to 80 percent attacks which caused due to a very basic uh, security loopholes and only few 23 to 25 percent attacks which caused due to some of the uh, some of the sophisticated vulnerabilities or sophisticated attacking techniques so doing basic right is the eighth element that we need to consider when we are planning ninth element which is very important is the resiliency when we talk about any business resiliency is very important and when how you define the resiliency resiliency is defined by you know the organizational ability to recover quickly because see uh, no organization in the country uh, in the globe can ensure or maybe can assure that they are 100% secure while while they are um, ensuring that they are doing all the things right there is a still possibility that uh, cyber attacks are I and mean, breaches are inevitable there is 0.001% possibility that there is an insider risk it can be anything which could lead to cyber attack but even if you are impacted by cyber attack can you ensure that the impact of cyber attack is very minimum can you ensure that it is very minimum and it is not causing you a, a severe dollar loss or reputation loss and what is organizational ability to recover it very quickly how is your business continuity and disaster recovery plans are configured that defines the resiliency element and that is very important element which is the ninth element when you when you plan for the security the tenth element of the security is that um the last thing very important thing is that you know uh, having right people in organization because no matter how well you technology you have no matter how well you processes you set up no matter how well plan you have whether short term or long term if you don't have right people to execute how you going to justify all of those planning and execution so having right people managing your security and privacy is a tenth element and a very crucial element that organization needs to be considered so this is a tenth step plan which really needs to be considered while you are answering some of the challenges which are faced by the startups so the key takeaway is that plan security step by step if you are a startup uh, do not uh, expect that you will do everything from a day one um, identify what is immediate things to do identify your short term goals long term goals 
and you need to have a proper plan for your security and privacy. So that's a key learning from you guys. And now, um, the very quickly, I want to touch upon the three things, and then we will open for the Q and A. That how you can simplify your security by uh, by ensuring that you are doing things right. The one is that uh, divided into the three phases. One, you secure your users because it is always about people. Second, you secure your devices, applications which are front end uh, with the internet. And third, securing your network. Which is an internal IT network. So, if you devise your plan according to uh, according to this around these three players around these three uh, pillars, it would be enough for you to ensure at least bare minimum or enough security for you. When you are having um, a securing users plan, then definitely you consider having good identity access management program because uh, when you talk about even physical security or when you talk about the uh, cyber security. Knowing the identity of person is very important. For example, when you go to any of those uh, uh, offices, they ask you to show your government ID proof to ensure that your identity is appropriate. The same goes with cyber security. If there is an initial access, if there is an initial uh, access request, the authentication is very important. After authentication, uh, it is very crucial that you are getting access to the right resources, right, uh, right subjects, right. So authorization is very important. So while we, when we talk about users, it is very crucial for uh, organizations like a startups to have identity access management program, define the roles and responsibility of a people in the organizations, uh, define what accesses they have in the organization and who can do what and who has the privilege and who has the least privileges, all those needs to be defined. Second, most of the organizations today, they are failing to implement the robust authentication authorization. And almost every application and every uh, organization now implementing the multi-factor authentication. Might be you are implementing multi-factor authentication for your customers, for your application, but you might be forgetting to implement multi-factor authentication inside your organization. So uh, privilege-based access control, uh, or maybe uh, PAM, or maybe role-based access control with good multi-factor authentication can be uh, instilled into the organization so that you know right people getting the access to the right uh, subjects, right? Then uh, there needs to be specific policies that need to be drawn in terms of in terms of accessing applications uh, on the internet, is the single sign-on or maybe uh, good password policies. Robert, uh, robust password policies, then access policies, those needs to be defined along with the appropriate security technologies to secure your users and their identities, right? And then lastly, uh, all things you need to think uh, about the security, the governance is very important. Uh, you will implement the security technologies like identity access management solution, you will have policies and procedures set up, but very important thing is governance, that how you are governing that whether everything is in place and everything is happening according to your plan and procedures. So governance is very important. So establish the good monitoring and governance mechanism in your organization when you are dealing with the user security. The second thing is very fundamental thing which we are talking about is security in devices. And devices is not just a computer and laptops, it is also medical servers, the crown jewels, and also key applications and assets. So given the nature of uh, Corona, I think uh, this is very important that you have the MDM solution, which is a mobility solutions, which ensure that you are having the security of your mobile devices, your laptops and your assets, which are distributed in a highly distributed nature, which has these specific certain policies set up to ensure that your devices are secure and functioning in the normal state, right? The second is that assigning the robust authentication when users are getting assigned to devices. So there should be a PKI certificate, there should be a strong, uh, strong, strong encryption mechanism, disk uh, encryption mechanism, uh, strong password policies, the second factor authentication, and all of those things need to be ensured when there is access to the endpoints, right? Then uh, it is also important to also keep a monitoring on the user activities on the endpoint whether it is a server, whether it is a database, whether it is an application, on the activity and inactivity of users, their password change, their configuration change, uh, the patch management, 
all of those needs to be needs to be centralized and that can be centralized to the uh, centralized monitoring solutions uh, it can be uh, also possible to enable the security solutions like security incident and security uh, incident and event management tool which will help you to monitor your all the endpoints and devices in the single console right and also it will ensure that you are having uh, you are not having a specific vulnerability and even if you are having a specific vulnerability you are patching those vulnerability regularly so having good asset management solution visibility solutions and um, the network and monitoring solutions it will definitely help you to ensure that all your uh, devices are secure uh, with necessary uh, precautions by from the security point of view right so that's the security in devices when you talk about security devices at at network at high level definitely when it comes to network we talk about ids ips because entry and reduction systems are very crucial and they are center because when you place entry or entry and reduction systems it is easy for you to identify or distinguish between the malicious traffic and non malicious traffic it is easy for you to do a classification and those classification can be uh, Based on the indicator of compromise, based on the IOCs, and it can be based on the behavioral detection. Organizations also can think about implementing the next generation firewall, which will help you to identify any suspicious activity which trying to enter into the network. There are some of the advanced technology like a sandboxing technologies and deploy, which are actually implemented by many bigger organizations, and most of the startups should also ensuring that they are having some of these sandboxing and deploys. to ensure that uh, the any of the file or any of the uh, any of the malicious link is getting executed uh, in the sandbox before it is reaching to my network so that uh, my attack surface is reduced significantly so along with ids ips and next generation firewall sandboxing solutions are definitely important one last thing which is very important is that the segmentation of your network because these days it is very difficult for you to uh manage the accesses from the centralized unit and have a one size fit policy for your network so segmenting your network based on the criticality based on the user accesses based on the traffic is very much important so we call it as a micro segmentation of your network uh based on the criticality based on the number of accesses uh, and based on the number of users is very much important which will definitely restrict some of the attacker's activity even if attacker into into your network So micro segmentation is another key element that organization needs to be considered while securing into the network. So outcome here is that if organization wanted to secure, it is easy for organizations to classify it into three phases or four phases. First is definitely a planning and procedure phases. Secondly is definitely at high level securing your uh, users, people part of it, securing your devices, applications, and things which are interfacing with uh, internet. and lastly is securing your network uh, i think uh, this will definitely drive uh, good security posture in the organizations so this is all about uh, how you implement about it but last thing which i will talk about given the nature of technology and given the nature of the work style uh, you cannot trust anyone in uh, in this particular paradigm so even if there is a possibility that there are external threat actors which are trying to attack your organization there is also possibility that your employee which is remotely working for your organization is having any malicious intent putting some remote location he also can attack your organization for special means it can be anything it for cyber hack it for it for any internal disputes so it can be anything so the approach which are getting um, highlighted today is zero trust approach where uh, the approach is that you don't trust anyone um, in the in the in the security whether it is internal user or whether it is external user you apply same level of security and same level of measures whether it is internal whether user or whether it is external user right so zero trust is all about that you always always check for the privileges you always check for the accesses um, irrespective of the external user or internal user and you do not trust anyone in this particular uh, in the, in this particular setup so that is about the zero trust but is it or is it only zero trust will be about uh, only devices and accesses no so zero trust can be about anything zero trust can be about devices and assets that you will not believe be um, any of the devices unless and until it proves its identity by 
device pack, device uh, assignment or maybe by doing the uh, you know um, we call it as a you know device um, experiment or maybe recognition of devices by their uh, their MAC addresses. So it can be anything that you you just try to distinguish between what is trusted and not what is not trusted. It can be zero trust of devices. It can be zero trust of network. It can be zero trust of people, users, accesses. It can be zero trust of data and workload. So zero trust is nothing but a philosophy or architecture that needs to be implemented um, in the organization to ensure that all the users in the organization are treated the same, irrespective of their nature, uh, internal users or external users, so that you do not trust anyone and you ensure that same level of security for everyone. So now the organizations are really moving towards implementing zero trust architecture for a secure access service age to ensure that um, they are ensuring that they are protecting their data, application, devices, network, and workload. So zero trust is another critical element today, and also in the coming four or five years, only for, not only for the larger organizations, but also for the startups and technology company, zero trust is going to make a very crucial impact uh, in the cyber security. So that is all about uh, that is all about the things that you need to uh, ensure when you're thinking about cybersecurity. So uh, it is about thinking about to so quickly summarize thinking about evolving threats which are targeting startups, uh, keeping up to date about those threats. Second, solving security challenges with the good planning and dialogue. Third uh, is just ten steps that you need to follow while you are planning the security for startups. Then, uh, what is the security checklist? from user point of view, from device point of view, and from network point of view, and what is the role of next generation technology like zero trust when you are managing the security. So this is what this is what the gist that we learned from today's session. Uh, I would request uh, if there are any questions, we can take it up uh, quickly. Thank you, Mr. Vivek, for the very informative talk and covering the topic broadly. So we now know that security plan and policy is a must for a startup to include as part of their product roadmap or strategy, no matter what state they are in. Yeah. So, yes. So now I think we can take questions. And uh, I think we already have a couple of questions. We can take them quickly. So one of it I can read out is from Ame. It says, is it good to have in-house team for security or can it be outsourced? Yeah, very good question. Um, actually, see, uh, it's depend it depends. Um, uh, it depends that how large your scale is about security. Means today, if you see most of the people uh, and most of the organizations, they are really thinking about having only uh, crucial elements with the organization. Means, for example, most of the organization today, they only have an incident response with them, and rest of the other security they mainly outsource. Means, for example, monitoring of security events, monitoring of security logs, all of those, uh, all of those, uh, all of those things are outsourced with managed security service provider out there. There are many managed security service provider who actually manage security on behalf of you, right? So all those complex tasks where you require a skill set, which is actually definitely a crunch. So most of those tasks today are outsourced. Means most of the banks, most of the technology companies, they have their security operations and security, um, security, uh, security processes outsourced. Uh, and only incident response and governance risk and compliance which is in house so, uh, so so this is a this is a this is actually an organization call that how they wanted to proceed but i remember um, I, I remember that definitely uh, there are many other organizations who believe that organization needs to be have their own security team and they start hiring people they start building security teams for a longer run because they know that we are going to scale we are going to have more footprints tomorrow we are going to have more digital footprints and for that, you need to have a larger security team and policy. So it's up to organization. If there are many better constraint and talent crunch, definitely organizations today going for managed security service provider and they're outsourcing their services. That is one. But if you're thinking about you are scaling your businesses to the next level, then there is no harm to start building your security teams, having enough resources and budget spend on it. Thank you. So there is one more question from Mr. Nanda Kumar. It says, typically many applications are tested for security and vulnerability at a periodicity. Would like to learn your recommendations in today's context. Uh, I, did, I have a question. Can you repeat it, please? 
Yes, many applications are tested for security and vulnerability at a periodicity. So, I would like to learn your recommendations in today's context. So, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I would say that you know, checking for vulnerability is ongoing process, and uh, uh, and you know, um, today I think uh, Miss maybe everyone is knowing about Log Four J. What happened with Log Four J, right? Um, the Log Four J was a very critical vulnerability that everyone. Could even ever think about, right? It was a nightmare for many of the organizations because it was it was the open source library and uh, it was impacting organizations in a in a just one single night, right? So vulnerabilities are always evolving because we are independently using many libraries which are open source in the nature. We are relying on many open source libraries and we are relying on the DevOps platform or maybe quick development platforms. We are using Docker images very heavily. We are not ensuring that we are using uh, secure images. We are using secure code practices. So vulnerabilities can be anything unless it is vulnerability can found out uh, unless you know attacker scans for it. So vulnerability management and vulnerability um, assessment and testing is a is a actually ongoing process. Uh, and I don't believe specifically that you have to do a, a vulnerability management and vulnerability scanning only once in the year. I believe if you are having applications and your entire business runs on application, it runs on the technology, then um, there should be a specific policy set up for checking for vulnerabilities on ongoing. It has to have uh, daily checks and balance or maybe not daily. Uh, it can be having weekly checks and balances that how your applications are doing. Is there any ongoing vulnerabilities? Is there any dependent vulnerability? Means, for example, log4j was one, and people have patched log4j vulnerability, but they found that there are multiple other libraries who are directly and indirectly dependent on the log4j, and those those libraries started behaving very um, uh, very uh, uh, annoying, right? And and that's why uh, the vulnerability management and vulnerability assessment uh, is ongoing process. And I personally do not believe that it has to be constrained with uh, once in a year or twice in a year. Okay, okay. I hope that answers the question. So there's one last question which we can take before we wrap up. What are the key points any startup should keep in mind for choosing security? This is from Anurag. Uh, for choosing? For choosing security. What are the key points any startup should keep in mind for choosing security? It's a slightly broader question. What we yeah, so yeah, so as I said uh, in the slide itself, right? So uh, as a startup, just one thing we need to understand that uh, if I'm forming a startup, if I'm having, so all we agree that there is definitely a burden from a business when you do a startup, right? There is a burden from a business, there is a burden from, um, there is a burden from internal stakeholders, external stakeholders. So it's not that when you start up immediately, next day you start pulling all the technologies and you, Start having the security operations center. It cannot happen in one night. That you need to understand. Um, the second thing uh, is very important when you talk about cybersecurity for any startup is that uh, I said in the beginning also, you need to create a good visibility and insights from your IT team that how your infrastructure need to look look like. You need to visualize it very well and identify that how you can plan security for your organization. So if you have a lack of clarity and if you have a lack of visibility about your organization, your infrastructure, your digital footprints, then it's very difficult to plan for security. So first thing first is that you will not do um, security for next day. First, create a good visibility and good clarity about your security uh, before you plan. Secondly, comes the planning phase where you draft the security plans and policies for your organization and you draft the long-term and short-term goals for your organization. For example, I'm not able to implement SIM solution in the first day, but I can implement identity access management solution because identity access management solution is very crucial because I'm going to have a people, people going to have some roles, they're going to access systems, they're going to access applications. So identity access management is very crucial for me. So by looking at the visibility and by looking at the clarity and by drafting the priority for your organization, Implementing the right security technologies and right security processes is very much critical for any startup, and it cannot be uh, it cannot be a single day or second day efforts. It will definitely take time of uh, two to three months or four months. 
while the, while you are doing that definitely it needs to have a limited exposure and need to have a continuous monitoring while you are implementing all of these um but as i said these 10, 10 steps we discussed those are very critical to follow when any of those startups thinking about implementing cyber security and privacy uh, in the organization thank you very much so with this um, we come to the end of our workshop thank you mr vivek for your wonderful and insightful comment i'm sure audience finds the same and i hope we can continue this interesting conversation with startups in the future as well thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you audience for asking question thank you thank you others for inviting me to conduct this session thank you thank you